Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is January 26th, 2018. My name is Lynn Marquedant, and I'm your host. Welcome. We have an hour of sewing together. I'm glad you're here. Grab a project and let's go. I, fresh off my trip to Austin, have 12 basket squares that are somewhat ready to web. I have, I still have four and a half of them that I still have to embroider. They're all colored and they're all up there. I think you can only see nine of them. And they're all surrounded by the scrappy off whites and neutrals. And I thought, since it's been a long week, I've been on a plane, I probably tonight is not the night to square them up and position them. So I've at least, I've semi squared them up. I've put them on the design wall and I'll look at it this weekend and I'll play with them a little bit and I'll keep going on the embroidery. So as advertised, we're not going to web the blocks together tonight as advertised. And instead, I'm going to start another project. And I can't believe I'm saying that with all the UFOs I have, but I have to do this. I'm going to do a jelly roll race. I have to do it. And it's one of the jelly rolls I brought back from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. And I'm going to use Color Strata. I'm pretty excited about it. It has 40 pieces. They're two and a half inches by 44. And I'm going to put in between each of these the black squares that I did this Christmas with those Christmas jelly roll quilts. So these are two and a half by two and a half, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they are. And what I do to do this is I take this apart and I leave it in the same width that it is, same order. In fact, I can do it right now. And then I'm going to sew these black squares onto each end. And then I'm going to sew all the ends together. And then I'm going to start sewing the ends side by side and side by side and side by side until I have about a large lap size quilt. So that's my plan. I know it's a little different, again, from what I advertised, but that's what I'm going to work on. I've got my Bernina here. We'll also talk about Texas a little bit. We're going to talk about back to baskets a little bit, some of the symbology. I forgot that we talked about it a few weeks ago, but I found, I think, a little bit more on it. And, and I, had, I had neglected to remember that oftentimes baskets are a symbol of feminism and the womb, which I never knew. So um, that's something else that we can talk about. And I'll just share with you, just like any of us can look it up online, which I love, by the way. We'll talk about some cinnamon, cin cinnamon, synonyms and antonyms. And then we're going to, just a reminder, we're going to be, we have two more weeks. So next week, we're going to do probably a Dear Jane. We're going to clean our palette with a Dear Jane because I'm way behind. And Sue Norton, even though she's into Lucy Boston, is probably catching up. And then on February 9th, we are going to start our Quilter's Choice Cards quilt making. And we have a lot of quilts to make with half square triangles. So if you haven't checked these out, I encourage you to do so so you're ready for February 9th. They're Quilter's Choice Cards. Look for them on the Color Wheel Quilts Etsy page and tell them I sent you. So I am excited to do this jelly roll race. Oh, and as always, send, send me an email. Let me know you're out there to lynn at simplycolorful.com. So I've been seeing this jelly roll race for years, and I must admit I never did it until we were at Missouri Star last when was that last fall, late fall? And now I'm such a believer. Oh, and I think I need to cut more of these. And this is really linty. Woo! 100% cotton will be linty. Oh, and I have my new, how many of you drink seltzer water? I am liking this. I'm liking it even more than the ginger ale. The ginger ale, diet ginger ale even, is a little sweet. Now I've gotten into this raspberry lime. It's very good. <sighs> okay. I'm going to cut. So how many of these did I say there were? 40? How many do I have already? One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I need, so if I need 40 of them, I need 10 of these minus one and a half. Oh, brother. Oh, get my new glasses. I pulled out some new reader glasses from my Ocean State job lot multi-pack. They're red. I cannot see you when I look up, but I can see when I look down. Ah. I guess that's plenty for now. I've been waiting to do this all week. Austin was great. Although I had a coworker say, are you having fun? And I said, yeah. As much fun as you can have at work. It's just, I just was not made To do, I, to do the work as sport, that kind of work. This kind of work, yeah. Anyway, Austin, Austin, Texas, great town, great food, great people. Hello, who's out there? Hey, Carol, I love this. We usually, I usually get the ding from Carol first, which I really like to know that you're out there, Carol. Carol's my sister-in-law. She says, hi, Lynn and fellow Fibercasters. Just watching tonight. Looking forward to seeing how you master this jelly roll race. Happy sewing, everyone, says Carol O over in Natick. Thanks, Carol. Ding. Hey, and KB says, pretty jelly roll. Oh, what does she say? She says, thank you, KB. Isn't it pretty? Do you remember when I got it? Very pretty, huh? She says, my color wheel quilt card decks came this week. I love them, she says. Oh, good. I'm still plugging away at the mess of a flower quilt. Oh, KB, do I have a picture of that? Or are you waiting to share it for when you're done? Keep on plugging. It's beautiful. Okay. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start here. So again, send send your pictures to Lynn at simplycolorful.com. I love seeing them all and hearing from everyone. Now, if I can remember how I did this last time, that would be really good. Oh, I know how I did it. So we're gonna do flags. And we're just gonna keep them in order. Oh, and you know, I need to go in from the salvage. Blah, da, 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 going well so far. So the only, <laughs> I, I have misplaced my coat on my trip. This was classic. I use the national car rental, which I love because they let you pick your own car in the row. It's like you have a little control, right? So you get there and she says, of course, I've got a compact, the smallest darn cars. And she looks at a Ford Focus and she says, that's your best bet. Well, I get into the Ford Focus and it felt like I was sitting on the floor, on the ground. It was just too low for me. And next door there was some Nissan Versa, Vera Versa, another car that looked a little taller. So sure enough, I get all my stuff out and I put it in the next car and I try it out. You know, I thought, okay, this, this car will work. And I get in my car, I go all the way where 
the facility is is 22 miles away from the Bergstrom International Airport. So I'm in my car and I drive the whole way and everything's going smoothly. It's a great car. I get out, I put all my things together and I realize, oh, it's like 55, maybe 60 degrees. It's a little chilly and oh, I don't have my coat on. I had left my nice new wool coat in the car that I had first tried out at National. Now, the good news is that it was still there because, because you know why? No one wanted that dinky little Ford Fiesta or whatever it was, Escort. So I go, it was still there. They put it in Lost and Found. They put my name on it and my phone number. And I said, I'll pick it up on my way home. Well, don't you know, yesterday morning, my flight was at six o'clock. So I had to drop the car off and drop the keys in the little um, hideaway there. There wasn't a soul in sight to allow me to get into Lost and Found. So my wool coat is still down in the Austin airport. If anyone needs a coat, it's a nice new one. It's a big one, it's good size. And I still haven't decided if I'm going to have it shipped back or if I'm going to bet that I'll be back down in Austin in the somewhat near term and I can pick it up. I think I'm gonna try and do it that way. <sighs> so aside from that, things were good. Went to eat at, do you see how I'm doing this? This is so pretty, huh? Um, we had Texas barbecue one night, the salt lick, and I brought Bob home some dry rub with garlic in it. It says, in 1967, my parents and I opened the Salt Lick on the family ranch in Driftwood, creating a unique barbecue experience born out of the Texas Hill Country, hard scrabble with the shared independence and sustenance of the chuck wagon. Today, we're proud to continue the tradition of hard work and using the highest quality ingredients in this sauce and in our restaurants. In true family style, your joy is our success. M. Scott Roberts. It's at Salt Lick Barbecue, BBQ. It's gluten free, it's all natural. It's like no other. And when you walk in, they've got the big barbecue pit and they have, oh, it just, you can smell everything from the parking lot. Yummy, yummy. And what else? Also had Mexican food one night. That was good, authentic. How about you? What have you all been doing? Enough about me. So send me pictures or let me know what you're doing and I'll check the email in a minute. Oh, and there was an email, Becca down in Georgia. I saw your email about Patreon and I was thrilled. And because I was on the road, I couldn't get to my Patreon account to see if I can just turn that back on and then you're all set, or do I have to set up a new page? So just know that's on my mind and I'm going to be working on it. And also Sue B, Sue Bryant out there, I'm gonna send you information about the shirts. So I guess, unfortunately, I'm not a fast service these next couple of weeks because, <laughs> uh, because I fly out to California on Monday and, and I'll be back Thursday. And then I hope I'm here for a few weeks. And like I say, we'll do Dear Jane next week. And then on February 9th, we'll kick off the Quilter's Choice Half Square Triangle Challenge. Not quite sure what we'll do, but I know Valentine's Day is coming and it would be fun to do a Valentine's Day quilt in one of the umpteen choices. In fact, how many cards are there? So this is all about, oh, look at this, 54 patterns. And then here's a second deck of 54 patterns. And you use 144 half square triangles. And the combinations are so fun. The workshop that we did, um, Jean and Kelsey did a workshop with us maybe a year ago. No, it can't be that long. But they've these are tested. These are 
and they have all the accoutrements. So if you ever, in fact, if you have a guild and you want to do a program, look them up. They might, they might travel. They might stay in Massachusetts. I don't know what their plan is, but we're from another black squares. But it's a really fun workshop because everyone picks a card the way we did it. Picked a card and chose a way to arrange your 144 half square triangles, and they all looked so different. And striking. Hear the band downstairs? Ew, I just hit my, sh my knee. Okay. I hope you can see this. It's so pretty. It's like a rainbow. Let me do one more and then I'm gonna see who's out there. Oh, and I also have to show you the modern quilt challenge that we're doing for the guild. Speaking of solids, in fact, why don't I show you right now? Not to be confused with this jelly roll project. At the last Marathon Quilters Guild, they separated us into, I don't know, maybe it was eight people in each group, and they gave everyone a yard of Kona cotton. So again, this is back to color wheel quilts. I attribute this, ooh, this challenge to them. Who's out there? Ding, oh, Allie, hello, Allie, down under. She says, hi, Lynn, I'm still thinking about a basket quilt. I have many projects on the go, and today I'm working on quilting. I have to open this up. <laughs> oh, how fun. Oh, look, Allie sent a picture, okay. So she says, today I'm working on quilting the Scrappy Square Dance quilt for my new granddaughter, Mackenzie. Congratulations. Oh, I'm sewing on my cheap $100 emergency machine as my expensive one is not playing well. Ooh, aren't you glad you have that, though? Ooh, and I hope your expensive one is in the shop and you know when you're getting it back. Look at that. Scrappy square dance. Very nice. Oh, congratulations on your granddaughter. That's great news. And I think I caught a glimpse of my sister's flower quilt. This may warrant. I really am going to come back to this. Let's see if it can come here. No, I don't want to install software. Oh, KB, that is amazing. Look at that. I could look at that for a long time. Oh, and I love how you repeated the pink flowers. And this is one that you and Alexa were doing together, if I remember right. Oh, KB, that's great. Oh, and you're doing the piano keys. Is that what that's called? I love that. And I love how you framed it in the pink. Beautiful. Wow. I can't wait to see that. So let me go back to this, and then I'll put it away, and then we'll look, read your email. So we started out this Modern Quilt Challenge. Eight people each start out with a yard of fabric. 
you stand in a row. They say, go, rip your fabric in half. So now you have two half yard pieces. You give one, you put one piece behind you, that's yours pile, you keep it forever. I think I started out with green, must have been my first color. So this was my first color and I handed half of it to the next person. The person next to me handed me her half, which was probably this light orange. And then we ripped it in half, put half behind us in our pile, gave the next half away. And you keep doing that. And each subsequent piece is smaller and smaller that you keep and you give away. And now what we're supposed to do is, see how they're getting smaller and smaller? That one. And then this one, you know, picture us, we're all ripping it, handing over the half. And then we're down to this one. And then, oh, I better not lose that. Hang on, don't leave me. Ta -da! And then this very light pink. So the rules are we can make any quilt we want. We can add gray, white, or black. I should have the directions with me, but I don't. I think those are the directions. And we're all going to hang them up at our quilt show this fall. So I've been looking for Kona cotton for sale on that. Every time I go in, I see if any of the grays are, grays and white, I think is what I'm gonna to add to this. So that's another project. Let's see who's out there. Because why quilt when we can chit chat? and see your beautiful creations. Speaking of Down Under and Allie, hi, Wendy. Oh, Wendy sends a picture of a baby. Oh, hello. Hello, Lynn and everyone. I hope everyone has had a great week. Lynn, I love the basket quilt. It's very pretty and soothing. Thank you. It's, I'm trying to keep it subdued. And in fact, I've been auditioning side bindings for it or borders. And I'm kind of interested in what you think. Over there is keeping the subdued and adding in the gold that I like, but keeping the subdued neutrals. I do like that a lot. And then over here, this is from Linda Grant. Her daughter had this fabric, this pink, and then some lighter green. And then we have some leftover white. Maybe that's a good reminder, though. I'm going to keep it subdued purposefully. And then I'm going to play with off-white quilting thread and put some more, more texture into it. Wendy says, I've not done much sewing, but I did finish the binding on Luke's quilt. Good for you. I've been busy, busy with my new granddaughter, Pippa Beth, and I'm going to finish Tiffany's double wedding ring quilt into a cot size for her new baby girl. Oh, that's a good idea. I have, however, been doing Mandela dot painting on local river rocks. Oh, you have to show us. And canvases, it's so much fun. I haven't done it since I was a little girl, and of course, Crystal is doing it with me. Oh, that's wonderful. She says, I've been working and the kids being back to school, with me between working and the kids being back to school. She says, we have Australia Day weekend, so it's the Goldfield Ashes on here this, set, this weekend. That's cricket, she says. It's been a tradition forever. There are people here from all over Australia and even London. Wow. She says, the town is buzzing with very merry, tipsy cricketers. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone. Oh, Pippa Beth. Oh. Hello, Pippa Beth. Oh. Keep painting and do share those. Those look so fun, those Mandela rocks. Dawn. Dawn from not too far away, not as far as Australia. She says, hi, Lynn and Fibercasters. I'm enjoying another Friday with you, binding a quilt for the, the MQ Quilt Show, Marathon Quilters. This weekend, I will finish quilting my Grand Illusion quilt. 
I made it a large wall hanging size. Good for you. She says, I can't wait to see how the jelly roll quilt goes together. I'm actually contemplating a Dear Jane quilt. Am I insane? No. If you are, girl, join the crew. <laughs> I say go for it. It's really fun, but it is a project and a half. But I tell you what, if you ever wanted to get together and do some blocks, I'd love to do that. And Joyce is making it. Sarah's making it. Lima's making it. There are a number of people close to you that are making it. Sending smiles, Dawn. Aw. Carol, hello. Oh, I'm so glad you keep writing, Carol. The title is UFOs. She says, hi, Lynn and all Fibercasters. It's great to be able to watch live again this week. I said last week I was determined to finish some UFOs. Well, I have been good and finished four. She says, they have sat in the cupboard for ages. Thought you might like to see one of the ones I've finished. Keep doing what you do. She says, oh, isn't that great? Oh, look at your picture. And your view outside. Oh, very pretty. I love you to the moon and back. Ah, oh, and your pods there. Oh. Oh, way to go. Four UFOs. You're going to be done by, let's see, four times three is 12. So January, February, March, you'll be done by March if you keep up, keep that up. And Anne, hello, Anne. Oh, look at what Anne has finished. Look at that sweater or jumper, as you call it, right? Do I have that right? Oh, he's adorable. Oh, he is cute. He looks like a little Tom Brady. Tom Brady is our quarterback for the Patriots. He is cute. Okay. Anne says, hi to Lynn and all the fiber casters. Great show last week. Just love how the basketball quilt is coming. The scrappy sashing in beige will look fabulous. Thank you. It is. It's kind of subtle. I wish the baskets were a little more subtle even. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Although I did want to show you one thing. I learned that different embroidery floss, I think, is going to make the flowers really pop. Of course, I wish I'd learned it before I'd done half of them. Um, even this. So see how on this big one, the embroidery floss was a variegated, had some pinks in it. I don't know if you can see that very well but really light pinks. Whereas, and I've run out of that, and Joann's does not sell the variegated embroidery floss on its own. You have to buy either the whole box of them, the 36 of them, which I don't need. I've already got that and I'm using that. Or I'm switching colors. So this was a darker variegated. And look at how those are popping more. Let me see. I noticed that when I was up, See the dip? I don't know if you can see the difference. Anywho, it's kind of subtle, but we'll see how they both come, come out. There. Let's put this one back. Okay. All right. So, Ian, let's. And let's see what she says. She says, I'd never seen the wax coloring before. And she says, I saw it on Penguin and Fish. And your flower and basket handles are beautiful. Thank you. That's where I saw it. I remember my mother doing it years ago. And I saw Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish. If anyone's out there and wants to check out another fun, she, she broadcasts every night. If you just need a fix of seeing someone working on something tactile or the fiber, Check her out. Um, she says, I've been busy finishing Jack's jumper slash sweater, and he loves it. He put it on over his PJ so I could take a picture for you all. Oh, Jack. Hi. He didn't want to take it off after, so I think it's a hit. I've also been making the charming chevron quilt by Krista Watson, and it's coming together. 
although I've just had to unpick a whole row I put on upside down. <laughs> As it's midnight, I think that means it's time for bed, she says. Hope you all have amazing weekends. Keep crafting. Love and quilty hugs from Anne. Oh, and with that, let's give Jack one more hello. If he's out there, hi, Jack. Okay, let's... What was we going to do? We need to get moving on our jelly roll, right? Okay. Dawn, this is just a lot of straight sewing, and it's not precise sewing. And this is this is the one for anyone who might have quilt guilds out there and you're looking for things to do. The jelly race nomenclature or name for this one came when you can have your guild all get together, let's say on a Saturday or anytime when you're all sewing together, everyone bring a jelly roll and then you race to finish sewing it all together, doing this. I am clearly not racing. It was fun to give away the two Christmas ones that we made in November and then I brought home and finished. I put UMass blankets on the back because the recipients had all graduated from UMass years ago and it was long overdue. So I quilted them up. Speaking of quilting, I don't know if Katie's out there, but your quilt's going on the frame tomorrow and then in the mail. Probably not tomorrow. I'll probably leave it with Bob. So hopefully it'll go out on Monday. It should, if I make sure it's all labeled right and have some instructions. Um, Okay. I wonder if any of my backings are going to go with this. I went to Joanne's, is it last weekend, the weekend before? Clearly this is not holding my attention, but I have something else to show you. The Stuggle flannel was a crazy good buy. So I bought this backing. I want to say $2 a yard. And I love how Snuggle just sews up and how when you wash it, it just shrinks together. And it's, it's good. These quilts are made to, I make my quilts, I've decided, to use and wear out. So this one, I don't know if I showed everyone this. If I did, I apologize for repeating. This is another one of those chopstick, modern chopstick ones. And I did curvy straight lines on it, which I'm liking. So I need to finish that. That goes in the TBI caregivers pile. But the reason I just mentioned that, throw it over there, is <laughs> my mother, mom, get up off the floor. It was a really good sale. I couldn't help it. So I have enough there for one more small backing. This is going to be the backing for that modern quilt. Like gray, you can't go wrong with that. This looked familiar, and I think, KB, you put this on the backing of Elisa's quilt. I loved it. And so that's for a backing. And then I thought you can never have for boys, you can never have enough baseballs and footballs. <laughs> my mother is either either fallen on the floor or she's changed the channel i just couldn't resist mom it was it was just too good okay let's keep going because i want to show you what you do 
after you put all these, these interrupters, if you will, these little black squares that I'm putting in really work well once the whole quilt's together. And it will allow us to put, huh, <laughs> none of these backings are gonna work. No, that's not true. Maybe that dark blue one will work. <laughs> no. This is the last green one. Then we get into graves. Be very interesting. So maybe because there's grays, I can use the gray back. They had some cute plaid snuggle though that I thought would make a nice backing. This is going to be a boy's quilt. See, so now we're getting into the grays. So, oh, we should talk about basket symbolism. So in the Bible, Moses came in on the basket, as we know, down the river. And the basket is seen in mythology and in folklore tales and in decorations. Let me see what that said. <laughs> Sorry, I have it here. Okay. So when you think about the symbolism of baskets, here's here's one one site's take. It says it depends if the basket is full, overloaded, or empty for a clearer translation. A bag or basket can symbolize the recourse that you have available to you or the baggage that you carry around, which has become a burden. Look at what the basket contains to help you understand the meaning further. But if you do not know, then you are unaware of how to utilize your own assets. I don't know what that means. A full bat, well, maybe they're gonna explain it. A full basket will symbolize abundance. An empty one, the emptiness that comes from being alone. Mm -hmm. Like other receptacles and hollow things, a basket may be a symbol of the feminine. A basket full of fruit and other provisions may symbolize well-being. An empty basket, besides symbolizing the feminine, might represent unconscious feelings of personal emptiness. Oh, how sad and deep. Now let's go here. So a little bit of history. According to Gardner's Egyptian grammar, the hieroglyph of the basket conveys the meaning of lordship mastery, supremacy of the man who rises above his fellows. A basket is sometimes used as a pedestal or plinth for images of the gods. In fact, according to Mariette, I don't know who that is, this hieroglyph also means everything made divine, God in the universe infused in one single being. An Egyptian art and writing, in Egyptian art and writing, the basket chalice perhaps suggested wholeness, togetherness under heavenly rule. The dead were sometimes placed in baskets and left to float away on the stream from which Isis would gather their scattered remains to knit them together again and place them in another basket, just as she had done with the scattered limbs of Osiris Apelius in Metamorphosis 1111, describes how in possessions in honor of Isis, a basket was carried in which was hidden the secrets of their glorious religion. The Buddhist scriptures say literally are the tripitaka. I think maybe I've read this before. Literally the triple basket. The name conveys the idea of the three powers, the Buddha, the founder, the law, and the community. The basket's a symbol of the womb. Moses and others were found in baskets at the waterside. And finally, when a basket holds fruit or wool, it symbolizes the women's quarters and their housework as well as fertility. Hence, the basket became an, became an attribute of many of a goddess, including Diana Artemisis of Ephesus. <laughs> Historians or scholars or my cousins will have a field day with how, how I'm butchering these names. 
Um, while priestesses wore their hair dressed in the shape of baskets. So that came from Dreamicus. Some synonyms of baskets. A creel, a container, a frail. Did you know what a frail was? A skep, a hand basket, a punnet, a bread basket, a shopping basket, a hamper, or a bushel basket. A frail or a skep. Did we talk about that? Oh, mom just wrote. <laughs> Hi, mom. You know what she said? She said, if one of those fabrics doesn't work, I'll go to Joanne's and I can pick one. You're right, mom. Thanks. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so baskets have a lot of sim symbolism. Let's keep going here. <laughs> Precious. Have fun at the orchid show, Mom. If anyone's on the Cape, there's an orchid show there tomorrow. That's about all I know. I should probably know where it is, but look it up. Cape Cod. They're playing cricket down under. And they're looking at lady slippers and the ilk on the Cape. What are you doing in your neck of the woods this weekend? I hope it's exactly what you want to do. And the way Jack liked his jumper, you might be knitting another one of those. And Tove or Tove in Norway, I hope you're, you were able to get some more snow. If you remember, she wrote yes last week and said, where she is does not get snow much. But when she said that, it then snowed. And she was happy about that. Okay. Wow, I'm so inspired. KB, your flower quilt is great. Everyone is just working away, working on UFOs. Has anyone heard of, so this is a time to do it, right? When it's winter out. And that made me think of, well, it's almost February. It's almost March. Before you know it, we'll be growing things. My neighbor, Bridget, who I don't know if she's on. I doubt she is. She's been reading about the way to sow seeds and harden them all at the same time in milk jugs, plastic milk jugs. There's probably some fancy name for it, but my understanding is the way you do it is you get those, uh, the two gallon milk jug. You cut it in half, you fill it with soil, you put your seeds in it, then you put the top back on and you tape it. And then you take the top, the very top, the little round top off. And then you put it outside starting pretty soon, I think. You put it in your yard. And when the time is right out there, it becomes its own little microclimate, I guess, and greenhouse, if you will. And it's a way to start various vegetables without having to introduce them. Like if you do it in the hothouse, then, it, then there's that transition period to get them used to the cool weather. So I didn't know if anyone had heard of that. Look it up. You do use these milk jugs. And I'll be curious to see how that works. Okay. One more. And then we can start the next step. Yay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, because I don't want them to get out of order. Oh, you have to look at this. Look at that. That's fun. Oh, didn't even show you the greens. I wonder if I really did it this way before. This could get awfully confusing. Okay. 
Nah, we got it under control. So now I'm going to go back to the beginning. And then clean up my. I'm going to cut one off. I'm going to go to the other end. Okay, let's start over. I'm sure once I get into a rhythm, it'll be fine. So I cut one off. <laughs> I can't believe I can't figure this out. Okay, I cut one off. I go this side. Oh my goodness. That might be our clue. All right, now. Oh, I know what's goofing me up, the salvage. So I'm gonna cut off the salvage. I just cut it again. We'll see if that was a mistake. So there was the first one. Now I have the second one here. <laughs> this is going to be just crazy. Because uh, I have things to cut off. First, cut that off, cut that off. Make sure it's not twisted. <laughs> All right, here's one that's connected to that one. All right, that's connected to that one. It has two squares on each end. Well, okay. So this one, this is not working very well. Look at that, it's backwards. Ah! Oh. <clears throat> All right, no need to panic. Someone better write me a note because I think we need to read notes instead of sewing. All right, there's one, two, three, <clears throat> okay, this one is the wrong way, there's that, now I'm going to pull up the next one here, that was really weird, I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> oh, got too carried away talking about sowing seeds in a juice carton or a milk jug. Okay, so there's that. Okay, now we're on a roll. One more, and then I'm going to check email. I'm going to cut the salvage off. Exciting, Allie and Wendy, that you both have grandbabies that have come.
Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not racing, huh? Okay, so now here's this. Here's this one. I think I would advise cutting off all the salvages before starting. I think that would allow you to get into a better rhythm. Cut that off. We have another end. So who is out there? I want to say hi to Maggie and Ann and Carol. Carol overseas. This is pretty. Now we're getting into the bluish. Blue green. Aquamarine. Okay, I'm gonna keep that right there. Let me see who's out there. Ooh, it's so linty. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, I love to see your emails. says, hi, Lynn, I'm being lazy tonight, just laying on the couch and watching your Fibercast on my phone. Oh, I hope you're comfy. We'll be looking forward to seeing the finished jelly roll quilt, such lovely colors. Thanks for entertaining me tonight. Thank you for being there, and I hope you feel better, and it's okay to be lazy. It's not really lazy. It's just enjoying, enjoying yourself. And Becca, hi. I hope you heard me talk about Patreon. Stay tuned. She says, I am pleased to report a paper piece top finish that I started in April 2015. Yippee, she says. Photo was taken before I finished, but you get the idea. The triangle papers are from Missouri Star. Oh, look at this. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I love it. And check out the colors. They're similar. Well, no, they're not really. I was going to say they're similar to the basket quilt, but a little bit. Oh, I love it. So Becca says, the triangle papers are from Missouri Star. The center white kite shapes are cut from charm squares with the Missouri Star wacky web plastic template. This quilt took two charm packs and lots of pink, green, and white scraps. She says, I'm in paper tear off hell right now. Ha ha. <laughs> she says, I still have to piece together a scrappy back. And then when done, the quilt will be donated to a nearby domestic violence shelter. I hope it makes someone happy. Oh, it definitely will. Yep. It definitely will. Oh, it's very nice feeling. She says, I'm getting warm again. Becca in Columbia, Georgia, Columbus, Georgia. Oh. Thanks for writing and sharing that picture. I love that. Leslie Ann, hello. Oh, Leslie writes, hello, Lynn. I wanted you to know that I watch you most often on YouTube while I'm sewing various things. Oh, how fun. I wonder if you're live or on YouTube. Either way, it's so nice to say hi to you and know that you're out there. She says, I spend a lot of time seeking quilting advice via YouTube, and I wanted you to know that I don't sign in or subscribe to anything because I'm hesitant about the whole web thing. I understand. Certain that subscription or not, most today are doomed to having less, if not complete, zero privacy. What can I say except my true feels, which is that it bothers me? Anyway, certain I'm not alone in how I feel. No, you're right. It is... It's the Wild West out there, and we never know for sure. 
And in my job, I know I've done a lot of thinking about this over the years. It's been several years now since we've been in this social realm. And I personally decided that it's where the world's going and I'm going to take the risk. So, and I have been hacked once on my personal Apple store account years ago, but you catch it early, just monitor your accounts. And I'm not trivializing it at all. It was terrible. Or no, it wasn't terrible because they caught it and they, someone was trying to, to, I think it was when I was doing that farming application, a farming game, and you could buy things if you wanted to. Of course, I didn't want to, but someone had hacked into that and was trying to buy things for $2 here or there or $1 there. And they, Apple stopped it and it was fine. Anyway, I don't know if that's where you're going toward. Huh. Leslie says, Leslie Ann says, your heart warms me with the excitement you show and give to others. Oh, I pray that as you grow and will, that you always take personal time to ground and balance your time, balance yourself. She says, never forget to keep speaking truth and fight greed for it's rare and important. Nancy Grace succeeded with just that. And I see you as having those same attributes. I just wanted you to know that you are viewed and enjoyed by many of us that aren't subscribing. With love, just be exactly what you are always you. Brightest of blessings, Leslie Ann. Ah, and it's titled You Inspire Me. Ah, what a nice thing to say. And thank you. So well, ah. My goodness. Um, Wendy, she says the top right basket is perfect. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you're out there. Keep on working on the UFOs and the baby quilts and the mandelas. Am I saying that right? Mandulas. Can you see how this could become a mess though, if you don't keep them all together? But, oh, there it goes. But it really does work up really, really well. I think KB is the one who first turned me onto this, or though maybe Jean, maybe Chris, maybe Kelsey, maybe someone else, Yvonne. Maybe Sue, Sue up in New Hampshire. I hope you're well. If you're out there, keep on quilting. Let me do a couple more seams and then I we might have to finish for the night. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try something. I'm sure I did this last time. I'm going to try not cutting them off. <laughs> Before I do that, I'm going to cut some of these salvages. There we go. All right, I've got a new method, I think. 
No, that's not going to work because I can't tell which is which. <laughs> this is making me giggle. <laughs> this should not be that hard. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, what a fun time. It is just so nice to just chill and relax and do some sewing together. Thank you all for being out there. I hope you have a great weekend. Do something crafty. Do something that you like with people you like. Get out there. And thanks for spending some time with me. And I'll see you next Friday night right here at 8 p.m. I hope you join me. Bye.